For Lab 1 Task 1, we're asked to drive a robot in a straight line a distance of x inches at a constant velocity v inches per second. I have four test cases here. We're going to start with one where the max velocity is exceeded of the motor's speed, which is 2 pi. So we're going to do 2 pi plus 1, and we're going to try that. And as you see, there's an error code printed because there's a range between negative 2 pi if you want the robot to move backwards or positive. So we're going to try at a max velocity next. We're just going to run it at 6.28, and it should move forward 30 inches where we have it set. And as you can see, it's printing the distance traveled as we run. It also calculates the time, given that distance and velocity. And we have our expected time on the left and the actual times and distances on the right. Now we're going to try when the velocity is zero. As you would expect, the bot shouldn't move at all. Um, Oops. Uh, we're going to have a print statement instead that uh, the time, distance, and velocity given don't really make the robot move, but we'll still print what actually uh, happened with the bot, which is zero seconds, zero velocity, and zero distance. Now if we do a negative velocity, the robot will move backwards. It's still printing the distance traveled, but the calculations were a little different. And then at the bottom, as you can see, we are printing the output, which is the time that it took, the velocity, and the distance. For Lab 1 Task 2, we are asked to learn to read the encoder on our epoch. My simulator uses a position sensor. In this lab, we are going to rotate our robot around in a circle of a radius r1 inches with a velocity of v inches. And we got five test cases, one where we exceed the velocity max of our motor, one where it's a negative velocity, a zero, and a positive velocity. Lastly, we'll check when the radius of the circle is given to be zero. So starting with the max velocity pass over, it should print an error and the robot shouldn't move at all. So we have the error down there and the given range of a velocity that does work for our motor. Next, we're going to try out a velocity of 0 and a radius of 10 still. Our bot shouldn't move again because our velocity is 0. This time we get a different error message though. You can see that it tried to move in a circle of radius 10 inches, but the linear velocity was 0. So our calculations are here. And a little hint that your velocity should be over 0 if you want some action. I'm going to clear this out. We're going to try a negative velocity, radius still 10. Now we should get some action. As you can see, the robot is moving counterclockwise, printing how far it's moved as we go. And we'll get some calculations at the end when it stops. Now that it's done a complete circle, we have our prints here. The left and right motors were calculated separately using the given linear velocity. And at the top, we can see that the robot moved in a circle, radius 10 inches, linear velocity of negative 5 inches per second, which is what made it move backwards. Let me clear that up too. Now at a positive velocity of 5, we got another circle, but this time we're going clockwise. Now that our full circle is complete, you can see the angular velocity was calculated at half radians. And we have our separate velocities for the left and right motor. Now I'm going to take out this 10, and we see that we have a velocity of 5, but our radius is now 0. So a zero radius circle is going to have my robot spinning in place and we're going to see what that looks like now. Okay, so we did a complete circle but it didn't actually move anywhere. The velocity used was the one given, 5, 
but I put a positive 5 velocity on one motor and a negative 5 on the other to have it spin in place and stop once it did a full circle. The calculations here on actual are given from the velocities used and the time it actually took the robot to do the full circle at that velocity.